Tankers, welcome back to another episode of Zola Tank Boys. In this episode, guys, we're going to talk about how do we keep our sand beds snow white. Let's go. All right, guys, while we were filming, we had to take a little break and do a ginger shots. So, Hector, try that ginger shot. Oh. That's how you keep your body super quickly clean. <laughs> ah. All right, back to reefing. All right, guys, like we just said, we're going to talk about how do we keep our reef tank sand snow white. Hector's behind the camera. Say what's up, Hector. What's up? So there's so many different methods as to how do you keep your sand bed clean. Based on my experience, for the first six months to the year, it's probably going to be the toughest that your sand bed regarding the cleanliness is going to be because it's growing, it's maturing, and it's becoming established. We're going to touch on a whole bunch of different methods and, and, and ways to keep your sand beds pretty pristine. So I run my reef tank with sand. Hector, you also run your reef tank with a substrate. And one of the biggest things, um, one of the reasons why we keep sand is because we love the way it looks crystal, crystal white, nice and clean against the beautiful structure and the corals. So guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. It's the easiest way to support our channel and it keeps us going. So well, let's look at some of the ways that we keep the sand bed squeaky clean. All right, guys, so we're in Manny's office right now. And one of the main ways that we keep our sand beds clean is with sand sifting gobies. We have a sand sifting diving goby in here and he does work guys, check it out. All right guys, so this guy sifts the whole day. I'll be here working and the reason I put this tank in here is because I love, love, love seeing this little guy sift. And all day, all he does is clean that sand bed. So let's see if we can get a good shot of him sifting. And what he does is he puts the sand in his mouth and then sifts it through his gills, cleaning it and taking up any trit detritus or uh, pests that may be on the sand bed. Now guys, quick side note. When your tank is brand new, you do not want to get one of these sand sifting gobies. And if you do, you want to make sure you feed you directly feed him and watch him eat because as your tank is brand new, there may not be enough for him to eat in the sand bag. All right guys, so now let's talk about the conch. I believe this is a fighting conch. So this little guy, all he does all day is eat around the sand bed, pick up any leftover foods. They're super, super awesome, very peaceful. Don't mess with anybody. In this reef system, I do have two. So here you could see one going to town and then I do have one on the side, which is back here. But these guys are super, super efficient. In most of my tanks, when I do have a lot of um, substrate, to me, they're almost a must. So definitely would recommend a tiger conch or a fighting conch. Okay, guys. So another good way to help keep your sand blade Another good way to keep your sand bed clean is having high flow towards the sand bed. And how you do that is you organize your rock work a certain way so the flow will be able to go onto the sand bed and blow the detritus away. So therefore you'll have a nice clean white sand bed. <laughs> this is an MP10 for this tank. It works pretty good, but you give it a good flow. The sand bed will get pretty good flow. Right now I don't have a filter on so you can't really see it too well. Now, how one thing you guys will notice here in the rock work that he has a lot of caverns so that the flow will go into the caverns and blow whatever detritus builds up within the rock work. Yeah, so good flow will help you with the cyano issues, any of that stuff, and it'll keep your tank nice and circulated. Wow, that's a great tank. All right guys, so we got a little pit stop right now. We're about to eat some Popeye's chicken sandwiches. Thumbnail, thumbnail, thumbnail. All right, guys. So we're not into the mukbang world, but we were gonna eat and we were about to film today. So we figured why not give it a shot. So we, can talk, we can talk about reefing. We can kind of eat with you guys so we can hang out. So I will say guys, what made me want to stop at Popeye's today was the fries. I think they have the best fries. This is what made me want to stop at Popeye's. Mm -mm. Make sure you didn't get the spicy one. It's normal. So I wanted to try a spicy one. 
So I got a spicy and a regular. This one's regular. This one is regular. This should be spicy. I can see where the hype was on these sandwiches, man. All right, guys, leave a comment. Do you like this sandwich better or Chick-fil-A? I think this is the better sandwich. I think they're all regular. I don't think there's a spicy one. But let me give it a shot. This should be. This is, I think this is spicy. Guys, look at that, look at that, look at that. So we're gonna eat and talk about reefing. We just came back from Reefa Palooza. Oh yeah. That's spicy? No. <laughs> Mine isn't spicy either. You got the spicy one, bro. It's not spicy. Mmm. Mmm. Which one do you guys prefer? This one or Chick-fil-A? For a while, I was a big Chick-fil-A person. Then I tried this and I was like, man. What the hell are we seeing? These here? It's not normal. Sorry, there's uh, traffic. Mmm, mmm, mmm. It's a good sandwich, guys. What do you think of this is Reef of I thought it was a pretty good turnout. I felt like there was a lot of people there. I don't, I wasn't, I was too, if, I was a little iffy about the, uh, the block schedule that they had. Cause, you I know, wasn't a fan at all. A lot of people, a lot of people, uh, were actually talking about it that we talked about it that, that they weren't really a fan of it. No. It was okay for me. I almost went back and I was a little turned off at the fact that I would have to pay to go back. Yeah. You know, and I get the whole COVID thing, so I had to manage how many people were there, but still. Yeah, definitely, definitely would have been better if it was a, a full scheduled day. Um, you know, it gives people the chance to, to, to go back if they decided they wanted to purchase something that they saw that maybe they, they were second guessing. Mm. I mean, that's typically the case for a lot of things. Pretty much every time we go to Reef of Palooza, we end up going back to want to buy more. But I remember I regretted not getting some A cans. Mm. They had tons of good A cans there. And, guys, there's just a crazy dog, crazy looking dog on that side. He's got a baboon's butt. It's kind of weird. Anyway, um, and I wanted to go back, but we couldn't. We couldn't. Well, we could. I'm getting fries are down here. We could, but it would have cost us an extra $25 just to get in. But before, that was just the year, the whole entrance. So I hope it's because of um, COVID. Hopefully next year it goes back to normal. And do you, is Aquashella doing the same thing? Mm. Or do you just sure. buy a ticket? I think you just buy a ticket. But granted, guys, when we say that we would have had to pay more, it's because we took the early early block, and we were already getting to the end of that block. Not necessarily during that block frame. You were still able to go back if you decided to. Mm -hmm. But we decided to scout out all the, all the stalls, see exactly what we wanted to buy, and then by the time... By the time we were ready to buy, it was already close towards the end of our block. So when we realized we wanted to buy some more, it had already passed. Somebody has to block. get this dog. They have to get that dog. That's a meme. That is a meme. Okay. This sandwich is great. Wow. Now you could argue that Chick-fil-A has a better flavor. I don't know. Chick-fil-A has a tad bit of a salty flavor to it. Because they brought they put the pickle brine. But I like that. But here, they put a lot of pickles. Chick-fil-A, the, they put a little bit of pickles. The chicken is a lot larger in the sandwich. And it's got a lot of crispy flakes in it mm. from, from the batter. Mm -hmm. Look at the juice. So what's the, this week's video going to be about, Hector? So, 
in the hobby, it's really tough to keep your sandbag clean, nice, white, and pristine. The fries. That right. Clean, nice, white, and pristine. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna talk about certain things that we do, how how we manage to keep our sandbags clean and stuff like that. Again, one thing that that I've learned in this hobby, and I'm pretty pretty much everybody can agree, what works for one person may not work for the other, but it's been working pretty great for us. So we're happy to let you guys know on how we do it, and then hopefully that'll help you guys out, and hopefully that'll uh, clean up your sandbags too. Did it get dark? Screens because it's on. Pass that other chicken sandwich bar. Make sure it's not spicy, bro, I'm still looking for it. I think you ate it. I don't, my, had no, not a tinge of spice. No. The spice is in the sauce, not the chicken, bro. I didn't have any spice in my sandwich. That's not spicy. Mmm. So, guys, leave a comment. If you guys are into mukbangs, I think it allows people to be to get to know you better. This is our first one, first of all, tank twist. If you follow our other channel, which we don't post in, I don't think we even uploaded that one mukbang that we did, did we? No, it's just on Instagram, a smaller clip. Was it called Manian Pal or something like that? So we started, we, we, you know, mukbang was a thing, and um, before we actually started Zoa Tank Boys, just a little insight on us, we tried the mukbang thing, and we just never fully went through with it. I mean, not saying that it would, you know, wouldn't have been popular, people wouldn't have liked it. It's just we just never fully went through with it. So we just never did it. <laughs> and we actually weren't even planning this. We were driving, and we just saw it, and figured, why not? Mm -hmm. Popeye's yeah. fries, man. So good. They're crispy, and they got a lot of flavor. Okay, guys. This ain't normal. This is not normal. That's a spicy one. It is. Guys, look, 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 look. Ooh, it has the red sauce. That's not normal. How, look how big, look at his head. That thing is huge. Can that be a thumbnail? That thing is huge. Wait. <laughs> Maybe it can be. Maybe it can. Let's try. So, what, dude, this is literally like. Look at the flakiness. Like, look at the flakiness, guys. You hear that? Oh, try, try, try. That's crazy. It's not normal. A little bit spicy. This is good. Leave a comment below. What do you like better, chick or Popeyes? <clears throat> so let's get back to the sand bed. Because maybe we'll just maybe we'll make this video part of the um sand bed video. We can merge them together. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Since, you know, we were going to do that right after this. Anyway. Yeah, we literally went to get food and then we were going to go. Also, guys, if you see us at Reef of Palooza, stop and say hi. We recently met um, a Reef Builders, Jake Adams. Nice guy. Um, we met him at the grand opening of Worldwide, like a year and a half, two years ago when that opened. Mm -hmm. But we met him recently um, this time around, which is kind of cool. And I met, you know, a lot of Reefers. Saltfish TV was there. A lot of cool people. We didn't get to meet him, but maybe next time. What are your thoughts? If I'm not talking, it's good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this thing is so good. Where's that dog go? No, man, that was pissing me off. <laughs> yeah, guys, if you guys uh, if you guys want, you guys are more than welcome to uh, comment down below and see what you guys might want to look at next and stuff like that. We're always open to ideas. 
Um, we're always looking on venturing out and, and doing different things, um, either with with the, the reefing community or even just adventuring. Things. Are you guys into mukbangs? Let us know. It's our first time doing it. It's our first time doing it. Maybe you guys want to see more mukbangs. Maybe you don't. Maybe this is just a one-time thing. Yep. Hmm. I'm getting kind of full. This is uh, they're so big, man. But I gotta get a I gotta get a little bit of pickle and spicy. Look at that bite, guys. There's a pickle in the bottom and some spicy sauce. And then guys, if you guys want to comment down below, if you guys have any questions about us or want to get to know us, um, this is kind of a little, I guess we can call it a little break so that way we can kind of get to know each other and stuff like that as well. So by all means, comment down below or any questions you have. Maybe we'll post a video on some Q&As. That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is spicy. You can't, you won't mistake it. This is spicy. Spicy. Today is a very, very hot day, man. So let's talk about the sand bed. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, it's typically newer tanks that have issues with the sand bed because the older and more mature your tank gets, the more stable it is and the less spikes of all these other issues you have. Um. I remember, you know, I had issues with cyano. I even had dinos in one of my tanks. When he first started, he used to always stir his sand bed to clear out any any debris that was on the sand bed. It's a big no-no, guys. Mm -hmm. But when you start out, you do different things, you learn, right? Get your sandwiches. Oh man. Yeah, but I didn't eat anything all day. Neither. You can't last an hour until you eat, bro. Oh, I don't want to get too full. That's my thing. Yeah, because you're probably going to eat later on with dinner. Sure am. Eat it again, boy. Ooh, that was that was good, though. Me full. So, Tacto, what do you do to your tank to help it with a sandbag? So, with me, with my tank, my tank's a smaller tank. So, honestly, I have flow. Flow mm -hmm. is, is my main factor. I have my rocks positioned a certain way where all the flow gets a chance to go into the sand bed, move things around. My hermit crabs, they eat any extra debris. The, the, the debris. Um, I also have a, a um, sea cucumber. It eats I'll the sand. I know, I still have it. <laughs> but it eats the sand, poops out new sand. So it, it, <laughs> it, cycles, it cycles it out and cleans it out. So that also helps out in terms of any debris that lands on my sand bed and it's, some, uh, the poop, the, the 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 sand that the that the sea cucumber poops out is clean and white, so it's pretty good because then it, I don't have to worry about any debris on there or anything like that. I wasn't even paying attention because my mouth was on fire. <laughs> this guy, bro, I, I I don't do well with spicy. Ooh. Over it. I was over it when I opened the bag. So, what are some things you do with your sand bed? I have my critters. What are some essential critters? The diamond goby and the fighting Kong. So, in my in the one set in the 350, the red seat in the living room, I have two fighting conches. All they do is stir the sand bed. And then in my office. I have um, a uh, watchman go diamond goby, mm -hmm. and he did one thing I don't like is he makes it all crazy. But I have to fix it. But it's crisp. It's it's crisp white. Now, granted, both of those things have been running for a while. So yeah, but he's he, he's he's done work since the beginning. I, I remember when you first got here. Yeah, yeah. That's all he ever did. Yeah, he, he he did a lot of work. Within two days, it was all clean, dude. And let me tell you, 
he had the most detritus in that tank for the longest in the beginning, algae and all that stuff. And when he got that Gobi, it was probably the best thing he would have done for that tank because he has the cleanest sand bed in that tank. Like you, you can't see, you can find an, an ounce of detritus in there. It's crazy. <clears throat> so I'm gonna finish eating this sandwich. We'll get home and then we'll look at the tank, look at the Gobies, look at all that stuff so we can show you what helps us keep our sand bed snow white. Let's do it.